Hey, what's up? Today I am with Gracie Lawrence, one eighth of the soul pop band Lawrence, formed right here in New York City. Lawrence is fronted by Gracie and her brother Clyde. And y'all, Lawrence was in my top five Spotify wrapped for 2022. So I'm very excited Gracie stopped by the podcast. She is such a talented and lovely human. We had a ton of laughs about being in our 20s, caffeine intake, and female empowerment, which you will hear more of. Season three of More or Less is sponsored by Neuro, enhancing your mind and body one piece at a time. Living in New York City, I spend way too much time and money on coffee and energy drinks, daily supplements, and then splurging on self-care products. Neuro creates supplements that fit your lifestyle instead of the other way around, with nutrients that enhance your health and wellness to something intrinsically convenient, affordable, and portable. With thoughtfully curated ingredients and lab-approved integrity, Neuro has changed the caffeine game for me since the gum is delicious and the mints leave me feeling fresh and focused. Neuro is always by your side when you need it. Take my word for it and head to getneuro.com now. More or less, welcome everyone. Oh, we are just... here with the wonderful Gracie Lawrence. Thanks Thank for, for being ha- here. Thank you for having me. Yeah. So on the show, we have our guests introduce themselves. So please oh. take it away with how you would self-describe. I'm Gracie Lawrence. <laughs> I'm 5'2". Fun Um, size. I don't know what else to say about myself. Yeah, I'm from New York. That's a big part of who I am. Yeah. And happy to be here. Amazing. And you are, I guess, one half of your sibling duo. Yes. But like one eighth. That's probably more what you meant about introducing myself. Oh. I'm in a band. You're human. My band's called called Lawrence. It's me and my brother Clyde and then six other people who are our friends – from various points in life and uh we're like a big soul pop energetic band and yeah incredible um and how are you feeling in this moment more or less now i get why it's called more or less (laughs) um more or less i'm feeling um i feel good i think yeah yeah i feel good i've been trying to be on a very um earlier schedule people who know the band know that we're very late night people we have a song called probably up about being uh up very very late but I've been like slowly over the course of the past few years of my life trying to shift that and I feel like last night I really did one of my like all-time stay up late kind Mm -hmm. of things and so I woke up today later and so I'm like damn it so would you say you're like training yourself to be a morning person in 2023 yeah I I wouldn't even make it like specifically like I'm trying to be a a morning person because I think there's moments where I like won't enjoy the morning no matter (laughs) what so I'm not like going for joy in the morning I'm just going for sustainably being able to wake up a little bit earlier naturally than I than my biorhythms yeah your your body clock as they previously would yeah exactly yeah I was just talking to someone about the nonsense of daylight savings time and if it's continuing or not yeah what is that um this is probably like in the comments we can ask people is daylight savings time ending in march or did it end already in november i don't know i don't know either and if you google it which i have it's really the it's vague language there's yeah. no clear cut of what we're gonna do i thought we were doing this for the farmers now we're not gonna do it at all but does that mean it's gonna get dark at four o'clock every day like that's right. i need answers around it and totally i don't know if the world has them yet i feel like it's kind of this like fun thing that keeps us all on our toes every year we're like ooh, yeah yeah right. you like, know it's coming like everyone, i don't know what it's gonna be like for it yeah. to, to know it's not coming right and it always like gives people this communal experience of either being like disappointed in their night sleep yes. or like really excited about it. Yeah. So I'm not pro. I'm not pro. But I <laughs> you have to pick a side. But I I do think um it's a fun little fun little communal experience. Like what is it, twice twice, twice a year. year. Twice yeah. a year. But I don't know. Maybe this is the year that it comes to an end. But T B D. Maybe we'll come back to this episode like 10 years from now. (laughs) Daylight savings time. Remember her? Um, Anyway, as I go off on that tangent, I digress. We always follow up with what is one thing you need more of? Maybe it's an emotion, a feeling, a word. Mm. And what is something you need less of? That's a really good question. Um, Something that I think comes up a lot in our music that I've been like thinking about a lot is the concept of being young and like carefree like those are equivalent phrases and although I feel like I've had an incredibly fortunate lucky life where you know 
stress. There's such a range of like what stress means. So I don't mean to say like, oh, I've had such a stressful life, like not at all. But I think the way I've approached everything has been with I'm not a carefree person. Like I'm a very anxious person. So I think one thing I'm craving more of is a little bit of approaching uh, my life, my work with a bit more of a uh, with more fun. Like yeah. I'm trying to be more fun about it, which I sounds can never pronounce so this word, not but fun. Spontan- spontaneity. <laughs> spontaneity. Yeah. Yeah. No, I I think like what's funny is people. I, I've never I I care about everything. Like probably like the idea of being carefree is like so confusing to me. I'm like, how could you not care about something? Yeah. Like I am very meticulous. Well, so. you're also from New York. Right. That's got to be part of it. It's like in your DNA to be very like need to be here, this, doing the thing. Probably. All the details. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I'm, pro- I'm very detail oriented. So I think I think trying to just approach things, not like lose that side of myself, because I think that there are benefits to being that way. But, you know, I hear people like that are older than me look back on this time of their in their 20s and be like, oh, weren't we so wild then? And I'm like, I could not relate less to that experience. Like, I'm not a wild person. I'm very uh, careful. So I don't think I want to lose that carefulness, but I'm trying to like balance it with more fun. Yeah. Lean into it a little yeah. more. Yeah. And then what I don't know. What do you need less of? What do I need less of? Oh man. I need to pee less. <laughs> like I I think I anxiously pee all the time. <laughs> do you drink a lot of coffee? No. Oh, <laughs> so I need less coffee though. Less coffee? Yeah, yeah. Like less caffeine. I, less caffeine. Yeah, probably. I I, I can't relate. For what less of I need right now, I probably need more caffeine right now. Interesting. No, I I kind of – I went through a phase where I stopped drinking coffee, like cold turkey, and then started like slowly reintroducing it back into my life. And now I'm like, oh. That's so funny that that's what you chose to say less of because, of course, I asked your team if you wanted like Starbucks or Dunkin' or, you know, a refreshment. Oh, yeah. And they were like, she's good. I said no. (laughs) no. (laughs) She's like, I pee too much. Yeah. (laughs) I probably should have been like less hate in the world, but I didn't get. No, that's an honest answer, that. and that's what we aim for on the podcast. Yeah. It's more or less mental health, feelings, vulnerability. Yeah, that's very vulnerable of you. Thank you. Amazing. I'm so brave. So, yeah. <laughs> so I was relating to your concept of like being in your 20s and seeing everyone like go really hard yeah. and you know have a good time. I was talking about this on the phone with a friend the other night because I was walking down the Lower East Side and I went to school. I went to college here in New York. So I feel like I had that partying phase that most people Mm. have in their 20s, just like at 17. Yeah, what was that like? (laughs) It was a time. Um, It it was a lot of fake IDs. Um, So now that I'm like, allegedly, allegedly, (laughs) not that my parents are watching this, um, but I think now that I'm in my mid 20s, it's like, I walk down Lower East Side and I'm looking at everybody having a great time and, you know, yeah. they're out and about. And I'm like, hmm, do I want that? Do I want to lean into that? But I'm also not craving it. Like, right. I could use a night out. I definitely could use a night out. But I don't think I need that hardcore party lifestyle be out till 4 a.m. anymore. I get a good, like, barometer is, like, how do you feel about New Year's? <gasps> That's so funny. I- I'm totally digressing. Um... I've been asking people because I MC for So Far Sounds as like for one of my freelance gigs. And I've been asking and I'm going to ask it tonight. We're doing a show tonight. What time did you go to bed on New Year's? Because I think it says Mm. a lot about you as a person. Yeah. Um, So it's been interesting to ask the audience that and hear like the barometer literally of time. Like people are like 9 p.m. versus like 9 a.m. Right. Um, But my feeling on New Year's has really shifted with COVID. I think New Year's was spent like in my on my couch for two years with my boyfriend and yeah this year we wanted to see you guys at city winery oh, but cool. um we ended up being in jersey for the weekend but i can go either way on new year's i can yeah. really you know i can play hard but i can also go to bed at 1201 i respect that yeah what about you i guess i could kind of go either way too although i've never I think when there's pressure around a night for it to be, like, really fun, I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. Yeah. <laughs> I, like, get very, like, resentful of the night itself. So I I mean, what we did for New Year's this year, which was play shows, like, that's that's a perfect way for me to spend New Year's. And then I probably went to bed maybe around, like, 2, okay. which feels good. Yeah, that feels 
like check the box yeah hello 2023 i'll totally. see you in the morning yeah exactly yeah i felt pretty good about that yeah. But I do encourage people who want to have fun to have fun. Yeah, live your I don't mean live your best like life. No, we grandma. Again, like we just spent like 2 years in a pandemic. Yeah, like for go sure. go out, go totally. kiss strangers, go have a wonderful totally. time. Yeah. I feel that. Um so I'm going to segue a little bit go into really your journey mm-hmm. um i think for people that are unfamiliar with the band lawrence gracie is the only gal in mm-hmm. the band um how has that been i guess over the years i mean feminine energy aside like have you felt like your wellness journey has been different the mm-hmm. way your emotions show up different what does that look like for you that's a really good question i mean i think very luckily like the the people who i'm touring with are feminists they're incredibly uh understanding and smart and like lovely lovely people lovely men which I think there are a lot of lovely men but you hear experiences that people have that are less pleasant and uh less surrounded by wonderful people and I'm very fortunate to like have avoided a lot of those you know, horror stories that you hear about women in the industry because I've been surrounded by, like, really amazing top-notch people. Um, I think, obviously, there are, like, weird incidents that have happened just in that I'm, like, a girl on the road. Like, mm. that's – it's almost – it's – it's I've never had sexist experiences internally in the band, yeah. which is – so rare and so fortunate like I would say most girls talk about their experiences and they're like I this happened in our band and this whatever and I'm like that's just not my experience because these guys are my best friends and I don't experience that but outside of the band just in the world because of the ways in which we travel and we see the world together like uh I've encountered weird things were like us you know before we traveled with our own front of house sound mixer like at a a venue like someone just being clearly weirder to me than other people about like me wanting to hear more of my own voice it was like oh like it just Mm. felt it felt eye rolly yeah things like that where you're just like ugh, okay like why why are we (laughs) why are we doing this but one of my like greatest joys and something I'm really proud of is that we're a band with seven guys and one girl but our songs are very you know a lot of the songs I sing are like very feminine (laughs) like talk about very feminine things and you know I think you'd probably expect that in that kind of a circumstance someone would have said something or like do we want to be doing this like that's never come up and I almost was like interested to see if it would and not for one second did anyone bat an eye and say oh we shouldn't sing a song that's so girl centric like it was everyone was super excited to like yeah. represent that so I've been very 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 lucky um and I yeah. speak I, I word vomit and I think that speaks to the longevity of the band yeah I mean you've been able to do this for so many years um and release songs after songs that are about feminine topics yeah um and it translates naturally to the audience thank you so was there a time when you were more keenly aware of like what the outside perspective was saying forget the fact like that you're the front woman but in the sense of other people you know you mentioned in your songs about the music industry Mm -hmm. and people have a lot of opinions and different perspectives was there a certain time over the trajectory of the band that it was just heightened for you like that I heard about other people's experiences or about you your band if people were saying you should sound this way or you should look this way oh. was there a time where that felt more intense for you personally hmm I mean I think if you go to any comment section of any yeah. app anywhere um you will find the negative comments and if there are anything about appearance it's mostly going to be aimed at me just because it's an easier target like so wild but it really I have to say and I don't I'm not trying to say this to sound like above uh criticism 
that is not the way to offend me. Like I will be so much more destroyed both in person and online by someone criticizing my singing than them mm. criticizing my appearance because it feels less creative. Like yeah. if you're like, we all know that that happens. We all know that people are going, both men and women will write comments about women's appearance online or that they're, you know, whatever. It's like, it, it, it doesn't really, uh, it doesn't really get to me because it's like people so preface that for you. Like, oh, that's going to happen. Yeah. What does like annoy me or get to me are people making very cogent, very like salient arguments about why vocally I didn't do this well or, oh, her performance and this was, you know, those comments come up not so much, but when they do, it's like, okay, well, that's like who I am. So well, that's like Beethoven's like, and Mozart's of TikToks, like the, like the Beethoven and Mozart's of TikToks. Exactly. Yeah. Like, you know, people criticizing musically. Um, and when it's more targeted at me, it, it feels offensive. But I also have come to recognize not to like get on my high horse. But I think if you have a voice that's very particular or like memorable, it tends to get um, scrutinized more mm. because it's not something that is universally beloved. It's like if you have a very something distinct about you, whether that be your style or whatever it is, it's something that people can point to more. So I, I've gotten better at being like, okay, that's cool. Like if someone doesn't like the way I sound, at least it's like because I have a very – because I have a sound. So yeah. that's – been something I'm more comfortable with now as I get older. And people will always try to tear down what makes you unique. Totally. Um, they will find the one thing and for you it's your voice. Um, they will take that and they know it's special. Um, and I think that's Thank you. just a universal experience that people feel threatened by it in whichever shape, way or form. Totally. But then they go on the internet or whatever or you know I'm sure you've dealt with business side of things like people saying things that you know, simply aren't true. And it's on you to kind of be like, all right, next. Yeah. And I think also whether or not it's from someone's insecurity, like people are totally allowed to not, to not like. Oh yeah. Me. You the know, right to have like, an opinion or they have the right to an opinion. And as long as it's not going to like preclude me from continuing, then, you know, go have your opinion. That's okay. Like we don't all love the same art. We don't, and we shouldn't, yeah. but like, I think where it, where you have to be really strict with yourself as like the person receiving the criticism is like filtering through which is productive and which is just like I don't I don't need that to continue on with my day. Yeah. Um so that's a an you know a journey. And yeah. I'm lucky to have also a band of people who like I can run through those cr critiques with like this person wasn't psyched about this moment in this song. Like what do you guys think, you know, and I can have more of a a real talk with those yeah. people. I was going to ask you that because do you think it would have it would be harder for you if you were Gracie Lawrence solo act versus mm. being in a band to manage Probably. those moments? I mean, it's so funny. Like, I can't even imagine that because I mean, I have a solo career in that I'm an actor and that's my thing. And that's not something I do as a band. Yeah. But I think like on the music side, my whole music life has been connected with my brother since we were little. So my like understanding of myself as a solo career, whenever I've like people have asked me that question, I'm like, well, I would probably just ask if Clyde wanted to write the songs <laughs> with me. And then we'd like probably start working on them. And I'd probably ask like Jordan and Johnny and the band to like help produce them. And then I'm like, oh wait, it's just Lawrence. <laughs> but that's so, how it started though, right? That's how you came into the fold because it was originally Clyde's band. Yeah, I mean, Clyde and I used to play shows all the time as kids yeah. like, around New York City. And it was just the two of us. And sometimes Sam uh, Askin, who's still our drummer, um, who we went to high school with. Um, and so we'd play music all the time around the city. Then when he went to college, he created a band that he called the Clyde Lawrence Band. And I would go up all the time to, to play with them. And I was in high school at the time. But um, I think, like, it was always – very much like I was welcome to be a part yeah. of that. And then when we when I graduated high school and he graduated college, um, we had like, you know, our first real conversation, like, are we going to really do this? That would mean, you know, 
I'm I was 18 at the time. That's like a big decision to be like, if we change the name, then it's like, you know, that we're, we're going for it. And I was like so on board with it. And he was, too. And we kind of just started and nothing really fundamentally changed about the way the band worked. It was more just like, like in writing. From a, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So 18, you had to basically choose college or let me be a musician. Yeah. I mean, I ended up I had a, I took a gap year, which I wanted to do regardless because of all the, you know, things I wanted to do both on the acting side and music side. And then really at the end of that year, after we had been a band kind of more formally out in the world for a year was when I sort of had to decide about college. I ended up kind of going to college for a year. Um, Test run? Yeah, kind of made like a cameo. <laughs> it's like, you guys are welcome. It was like the pilot of the film. Like yeah, the pilot truly, of the series. Truly. And then I, uh, I was there for a semester, but I was gone a lot. And then second semester I was on tour, but I still was doing work. And then sophomore year, I think I went for a week. And I remember go, driving to, to college and I was like, oh, this is not a good idea. I Because it was really hard to do yeah. post college in the band because I didn't, in no way was I choosing between them. I was like, I'm doing the band, but I'm right. just going to see if I can do college at the same time. And I think the answer is you kind of can, but like, what's the, what's the point? What are you getting out of it? I'm sure a lot of people, a lot of professors would disagree. I'm sure a lot of parents would disagree. Listen, I worked full time um, throughout college, so I, yeah. I get it. It's and a juggle. I think if you know what you want to do, um, there are obviously advantages to college. Um, someone can write them in the comments below. Uh, <laughs> but I, it, it was not, it wasn't uh, serving me well at that point in my life. Talk about mental health. That was difficult. So I think yeah. uh, I, I, leaving was a very good decision for me. And I'm sure, you, I mean, you come from a really creative family. Yeah. Were your parents supportive of that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. They were like, I mean, I have a very unusual, my parents are unusual, I guess, in that regard and that they come from art and they are, um, they don't, they come from art. That sounds <laughs> very gross and weird. The generation. They, they, they are, you know, my dad's a writer, director, my mom's a dancer. So they're, uh, obviously they are familiar with that world, but also, I think on the most basic level, like if your kid seems unhappy, like you want to try to figure out how to not make it that way. And um, also I just – the band was like – it wasn't also the kind of thing – I think even if the band wasn't like having get forward momentum, they would have been like you should figure out what you want to do and you yeah. can leave college, yeah. absolutely. But um, – but – especially because the band was already a thing and <clears throat> I had an acting career and all these things. Well, I was like, going to ask you that. Like, I'm sure they were the ones taking you to auditions in New York when you were younger. Yeah, my mom. Would yeah, come, yeah, so they've always seen that side of you, I'm totally. sure. Totally. Yeah, no, they were very, very, uh, like, you should do whatever you want. And even, like, I think logically, even before I went to college, because the band was already a thing, people were like, you know, you should do whatever you want and almost going to college was like the choice of like what I wanted to do rather than like what the world yeah. wanted me to do. And then, you know, so I think everyone's just been very supportive of kind of what I want to do, which is unbelievably fortunate and like talk about privilege. That is like the ultimate privilege is having people in your life who are supportive of the decisions you want to make because I feel like if there's anything I've observed in other artists, it's like a huge hurdle is feeling like loved and supported for doing art, like by the people around you. Yeah, it's not always one size. No, all, not at all. So I'm going to keep talking about the college thing, but did you, what did you want to pursue? So why, you know, when you got that decision in the mail, yeah. what was in your soul telling you, I'm going to go? Um. I'd been working as an actor since I was nine. And in a way, I think it was like it represented like normalcy. Like it mm. represented an experience that people have um, at this time in their life. And I felt slightly disconnected from, you know, I'd been working for a long time and I went to a, a normal high school. Yeah. I, I wasn't homeschooled. But um I also knew everyone in my band had gone to that college and had such a positive experience. And 
really like life changing experience. Like everyone talked about it as the best time of their life. And I think I had some feeling of like, I should choose what I want to do for myself as it represent, you know, like this moment in life that seems really important to a lot of people. Like I'm, I'm allowed to want that. Um, so I think that was sort of what drove the decision. But even as I was doing it, I was I was unsure. And I had the dates marked in my calendar of when you could get your money back for the semester. And there was uh, a little voice in your head. Oh, totally. Yeah. yeah. Like I was very I was very diligent about it. And then second the the second year I, I went, I was like, I knew I was like, I don't want to be here. And I like made sure to leave before I would have <laughs> had to pay for this. Like so, syllabus week. You're like, I, I I was like, yeah, no, truly. I was like went into the office like the day before I saw on my calendar. I was like, okay, I got to do this now. Yeah, it's rip the Band-Aid, literally. Yeah. So, yeah. But to that point, like, I, I know I asked you this question, but I feel like I answered in my head of, like, going to college is that first adult decision I think a lot of people make. Yeah. Um, that is, you're at a crossroads of, do I go to college? Do I pursue a trade? Um, do I work in my family's business? Like, it's all the these questions that you're forming your identity. Yeah. Um, And I can only imagine what that experience was like for you, given all of the above. Yeah, I think I already had a lot of that figured out. So I wasn't really in the same boat as as people who were there, which, by the way, that's like a very that's great. Like people who go to college and are figuring out their thing. That seems awesome. Yeah, that wasn't that wasn't my experience because I was like, had already been working for a really long time and had a, had this band. I signed a record deal the day I was driving to college. Like, wow. so that was like a weird experience in itself. Um, that it was just all, it was weird. It, it was yeah. like very weird. And I always felt a little like out of body when I was there. Um, and probably speaks to some ways in which I feel like outsider-ish or whatever and was trying to like have an experience that was very that's what like, I was just gonna say American that's like such and, a dichotomy you know, like, you're like a paradox totally. like you were craving normalcy yet when you had it you were itching to yeah, do music exactly and I and I think ultimately in a weird way like I what's actually really funny is that I feel like I had way more of the normal college experience when I was in high school and going to travel to college to play shows yeah like that was the most fun I ever had because I didn't have to do work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was in high school and I would go and hang out with all these people that were my brother's friends that ultimately became my really good friends and my bandmates. And I'd play these shows and it was like the best time ever. And then when I went to college in a weird way, I was like, I already did this. Like I already had the social experience yeah. of this. I actually really did have a, a pretty like – I had this experience. So that was funny too, where I was like, the whole thing was very weird. And was I here already? Like, yeah, did that count? Yeah. Um, and then also I, there were things that I really wanted to like study and stuff. You know, I love reading and there were things I wanted to gain academically, but ultimately I think a lot of those things I, I still can do not at college. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's that personal growth. Yeah. But it's funny. Like, that's exactly what I was alluding to and seeing people go out because I feel like I I did that part of my life when yeah. I was really young in college. Um, and now, you know, a lot of people move to the city when after college, really, yeah. they go to a state school or, you know, maybe they live at home or they go to a community college, whatever it is. And then they end up in a major city. Yeah. Um, so I have a lot of friends that have moved to New York and, totally. you know, let's go out. And I'm kind of like, oh, I've been there. Yeah. Done that. Like, I, I don't mind, but it's just like that period of my life. I, now I just want to sit and watch Netflix. Totally. And drink tea and yeah. have a good time with myself. For sure. Uh, social pattern. Is just way yeah. Different. I've been, always been a little bit like that. <laughs> like, since always, I like, was a child. I've always <laughs> called myself like an extroverted introvert. Yeah, for sure. It sounds corny, but I think there's days where I'm very like I do this now for a living. Yeah. But I also feel very introverted in the sense where like after this I need to go home and like recharge. Oh, for sure. I mean, I, my job. Your is job is an being, entertainer. Like, the most extroverted, like la, da, 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 like <laughs> so in people's faces, and so everyone I think thinks of me as this like extroverted freak. And then in my life, I feel I could. I could spend I I had you know COVID twice over the past however many years spending those 12 days alone in a room was like flew by like fine for me which I know is not how a lot of people feel but I'm just so okay yeah creating uh you know 
activities for myself or things to think about. I could spend a whole day like, you know, writing a idea in my notes app like that. I can pass the time, um, which I feel very fortunate about. But it also can be like a sinkhole in that you're like you never go out, which is yeah. Something there's I also do. barometer once again. There's yeah. the barometer yeah. of like how much is too much and how yeah. little is too little. I think there's something to be said too about being forced to be still, mm. which I think COVID brought on for a lot of people, whether yeah. you had it or not. Like when we were over quarantine, like you were forced to do totally. nothing or pull back from what you were doing. And that's way harder. I, it's way easier what I'm describing of like when you have COVID and we already know that it's going to last you a certain period every of time show and then you're on like the internet. out and you're yeah. fine. Um, obviously, that's a way easier experience. But yes, the actual pandemic itself was more difficult, I think, for, for me too. Yeah. So y'all are headed to Europe in March. Yeah. So total opposite of COVID and quarantine. How yeah. does it feel to know you're going overseas and seeing folks yeah. and being in different cultures? Are you excited? Are you nervous? I know you mentioned anxiety is a thing you struggle yes. with. How are you feeling? I feel I'm really excited about it. It's true. Like we haven't been to Europe in a really long time because of, you know, this thing called the pandemic. And uh, and it's very, very exciting. I think that we had, you know, you don't really know, like, when you're not, when you haven't visited a place frequently, or this is our first headline tour in Europe, we don't know who's going to be there, who's going to show up. But we were really, like, pleasantly surprised by, you know, the day the shows were announced, like, many sold out. Y'all kept so, adding more dates. Yeah. Right? yeah I remember so seeing that. So that was, like, and and truly came from a place of, like, we just don't know, you know, we, yeah. we don't know who, who our fans are there. And so it's been, like, a really lovely indicator of of you know who we're gonna meet out there and the fact that you know when we go to Europe there will be people that come to the show yeah that's super cool um so so I'm really excited about it and uh yeah I haven't I, I think I've been to all of the places maybe on the tour but like in a touring way like yeah. I've been there for a half a day and Will like you have seen time this time the street around? I'm gonna go maybe a few days early to kind of. That's a good idea. Kind of figure it out. That's my that's my hope. But yeah. um, we'll see what happens. But I'm excited. Be awesome. yeah, yeah, I feel like so many artists say that they're like, I'm not even spending time in the cities that. I know. I feel so bad when I do like an interview with like a local paper somewhere, mm. and they're like, "How did you love?" blah 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 yeah, city yeah. in America and I was like well the street we were on was like gorge the, Loved the coffee cool. shop two blocks down other than that could not tell you um and that is unfortunately like one of the weird experiences of being a touring artist is yeah. not really getting to see it's the places travel you're in. but travel within constraints yeah I've seen the highways yeah. I know what all the highways look like but I don't know I don't get to really have the experience of going around each city that we're in. Yeah. But and your body clock going yeah. back to where we started. Your body clock is totally. completely altered. You're just like exhausted. The idea of like, yeah, I mean, we also tour hard and so often we're like getting into places like that morning or yeah, whatever. Yeah, so yeah. it's late nights. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Well, I hope you have so much fun. Thank you. Um, we're gonna end with a final question, which is okay. what is a lyric or affirmation that keeps you moving forward? Ooh, oh my God. Um, that's such a good question. Not our own, right? Like You can someone, do your own. No, that feels obnoxious. Why not? Um, <laughs> well, I mean, if, I, if you insist. <gasps> no, I mean, I would be remiss to not mention that, like, the song that has carried us through this year has been a song called Don't Lose Sight. Heck yeah. I was going to say that's that's mine that keeps I me. never I well that's cool I never like listened to our music but I was like doing work on something the other day for the band and I was having kind of a weird day and I had like not revisit like I don't I can't hear the songs the songs sometimes yeah, yeah, yeah. and that did come on and I was like okay like don't lose sight I, I'll take it like I get it you know um but no I mean I guess I don't even know what lyrics should I say. Don't lose sight is great to work out to, too. Oh, thanks. It's a really good, I mean, I'm a a soul cycle nerd. Yeah, but like like cycling, hit, like running, cardio. Yeah. 10 out of 10 recommend. Thank you so much. I guess I'll go with like- You get your own cardio performing it, I'm sure. Oh, I, I, yeah. The shows themselves are like truly- High energy. Sweaty. Yeah. Yeah, it's a sweaty experience. Um, I'm like, I guess I have to choose a Beatles lyric of some kind. Um, I feel like probably 
you know, end in the end, the love you make is equal to the love you take, right? That's the order. Yeah, 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 yeah. <sighs> That's a good so way to end it, Gracie. Profound. That That's was probably how I'd say. I, it, yeah. I like that we're ending on that note because it always comes back to the Beatles too. I know. I'd be like, I can't, I can't say someone else. You know, that <laughs> if I must. Truly. Well, um, thank you so much for being here. This was super fun. Thank um, you so much for having and me. And good luck on tour. Have so much fun. Thank you. And thanks for sharing your mental health. Wait, how are you us. doing? <gasps> how am I doing? <laughs> wait, <nobody's laughs> this ex- wait, this ex- <gasps> explains my experience of life. We finished the interview, and I'm like. Oh my god! I didn't ask her how she was on a podcast about mental health. <gasps> I've been doing this what three seasons now. I don't think anyone said that. How are you doing, more or less? Am I doing more or less? Oh, god. I just loved it. Oh, the eyes that just rolled. Don't in cry. My head. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know what? Today, I you know more or less, I'm feeling optimistic, which is whoa. Nice. I'm cool. really not a new year, new you, new you kind of person. No, me neither. Like I don't get that, but. I don't know what is in the air, but I feel like 2023 is going to be good. Like, that's I have a good. good feeling. Yeah. So that's where I'm at. I'm trying to like embrace that. Every totally. Day. That's awesome. Thanks. Congrats. Thank you for asking. Of course. <gasps> so fun. We'll have Gracie host the show next season. Oh my God. You guys. <laughs> Thank you. My Thank you so much. That's a wrap on this week's episode of More or Less. Thanks for tuning in. And if you'd like to help support the podcast, please share it with a friend, post about it, give us a review on Spotify, Apple, wherever you listen to podcasts. If you want to stay updated on what's next for More or Less, please give us a follow at More or Less with Jess on Instagram, TikTok, all the social media things. Please take care of yourself and we'll catch you next time.